rusty wheel and knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's valued. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of years. And let Hello, her everybody. Again. Welcome back to part two of my Singer 24111. Rosie the Riveter Machine. This is her backside here. And I am going to get started taking some things apart. I have decided I am not going to completely disassemble her um, when I flip her over. I'm still not sure how I'm going to flip her over um, and show you her oil system and everything. It's going to be too complex and too dangerous, I think, to remove everything. But I can tell you right now, this is locked up. So I know I'm going to pull, this is for um, the lifter bar. I can't even lift it with the lever over here. You can see this is completely froze up. Okay, um, let me turn the light on, that will help. So I know I need to get this part cleaned out and I'm thinking up here, sorry, I'm thinking the reason this is frozen up is because something up here is frozen up. So my goal today is getting this disassembled what I can up here, either disassembled or cleaned. And on the bottom, let me flip her if I can. You can see the oil system here. This is completely nasty. I want to pull the, this is the filter for the oil system. I want to pull that out. And if I can and have time, I want to try to flush out the oil system with a 50-50 mix of kerosene and sewing machine oil. And that's my plan for today, so let's just see how far we get. So um, that lifter lever that goes underneath the table, let me turn you here, that lifter lever pushes something from below here, which pushes this bar, which is supposed to raise it, which is supposed to release the presser bar. Um, I'm actually thinking that I should work on this front area here before I take this off because this is connected to something in here. So let me reorient everything and see what I can come up with. Actually, I think the first thing I'm going to do is pull off the tension mechanism. It looks pretty basic here. Um, very similar to the one on the 66 I just did actually. Uh, a little bit sticky there. So, so far we've got these nasty little pieces, a couple discs. I need to unscrew uh, this peg. There is a set screw here on the side. I'm going to get my screwdriver in there to release that. So hopefully I can pull this out. So let's see here. I am just going to remove this screw entirely. I am not sure how long it actually is. I'll clean it up before I put this back. Okay, so with that set screw, that set screw goes in here and that holds it all together. You can see how nasty this is. It's the little pin that's supposed to release the tension. So that is going to be cleaned out. Um, all right, let me see what I can do to get in the nose up here. There's actually a screw here that is holding on this thread guide and that screw is part of what is keeping this front plate closed off, I believe. So, here we go. That will get cleaned also. And uh, I got two more screws up here and down here that I'm going to need to remove and I gotta find a way that I can move her around easier for you guys. She is too big to put on my turntable, um, too long for me to tip upright. So we're just gonna make the best of it here. Let me take these two screws off right here and we'll see what she looks like inside. All right, so I've got the little front piece off. Um, it's an aluminum, a cast aluminum. 
I, there's actually a cast aluminum piece that was right up here on top. I've actually already removed that just because I was curious what was going on in there. And I've actually stripped it and primered it already. I'm going to do the same with this just because, you know, this is so nasty. It's going to have to get totally clean, um, you know. But here's the little screws that go with it. I did not keep close eye on which was which, but I am pretty sure that the shorter screw was on the top and the longer screw was on the bottom. That's what I'm thinking right now. Uh, if I'm wrong, well, you know what? We'll know when we try to screw it back together. I'm going to be putting these two away separately from here. And just so I keep track, I wrote front plate. I don't know if you can see on my little baggie. So when I come across two random screws later, I will know where they go. This is going to go somewhere else. Okay. I can see part of their very, very dry oil wicks here. So let me see if I can tip her up here so you can get a view of what I am looking at. In here, this is what we've got. These parts here are part of the oil wick system. They're extremely dry, you know. This is all very filthy in here. Um, I believe I can take out the uh, lifter bar and the needle bar, but I'm going to be leaving the oil, the oil system area intact as much as possible. But I'm going to need to remove all of this because it's just, it's, it's locked up. It's locked up. I can't, I can't lift the lifter lever. So, you know, you can't sew if you can't lift the lifter lever. So, um, hmm. how are we going to do this? I'm going to start with the presser bar. It looks like I need to take this block off here. Actually, let me see if I can just unscrew this finial up here on top. Give me a second. Okay, I'm just going to hold it here. I want to show you. I'm untwisting this, and look. It's turning the entire shaft. I think that somehow this is connected to the entire presser. Okay, I just came through, so I am lifting it out, and look, the whole thing is coming out in one big piece here. Just wanted to share you that. Now down here at the bottom, is this a separate washer? I think it is. Okay, that is at the very bottom of that whole spring. There's probably one at the top too. At least it looks like it right there. Um, I will find out when I take it apart. Now, um, I am going to go ahead and remove this little lifter lever. There's a screw from the side here, if you can see right there, that I need to loosen to pull this out. Okay, I want to show you. Um, once I had that out, I look just. I have my screw out here, which is this little set screw. Come on, focus. All right. Um, but it's not coming out yet. So I lift, just pushed it up, and now this whole piece slid up, which did not do that before. So I've loosened up this little set screw. Sorry about that. Putting it aside and loosened up this screw, okay, which has a little shoulder on it, a big flat head. It was right here, and I'm going to see if I can just wiggle this block up. Um, it looks like I should be able to with the way that it moved up earlier. See, watch this. Jink. It, it actually looks like it's attached here. Somehow it's attached to this shaft. Let me see. There's a little hole right here. Oh my gosh, focus for me. There's that hole right there. I can't see if there's a screw in there or not. Let me do some poking and see if there's a way I can pull this off of this shaft. If not, I'm going to go ahead and we'll remove this needle because that's scary. Take off the little screw here and the presser foot and see if I can just push that entire shaft up. I'm going to show you I was able to just pull this lifter lever up. You know, it's kind of nasty, but that's what it looks like. So it just, if I can get my camera to focus, it just pushes straight down into that hole that's in the casting and then the set screw tightens down here. This is the foot. It looks like a high, slightly slanted shank. It's definitely high. Um, I will have to try and see exactly 
if I need a slant type bit. I know it's a high shank. Okay, I want to show, I was able to tap this off here, you know, pushing the needle bar down some. There's a groove in the back, very back here, but the bottom of this is sliding in, okay? So it was set in like that. This big hole there is where this bushing uh, sets inside that big hole like that. And I am not too sure why this hole is here. I guess I will find out later. But I'm going to go ahead and set that down with the rest of my presser bar stuff. And then this should also slide up. This is where that flathead screw I took off just a bit ago was. And there you go. So that has come off my presser bar here also now. And I'm hopeful I'll be able to pull its little grodiness out of there. Okay, I wanted to show you, I actually had to spray penetrating oil everywhere and then took my wire wheel on my Dremel, you know, and cleaned up all the nasties down here because it was not going to come through. And I'm hoping that it will now. So there we go. Yay. Okay, so that is my presser bar. Um, all of these need to be cleaned a lot. Now it looks like there's one last piece that's part of that system and it's right here. And I want to show you the numbers. Get it to focus. The numbers and the part number and everything. Come on, focus. There. Uh, they're upside down. So when I put this back in, I need to put it in so that those part numbers are upside down. I can lift it out. Looks like this okay and that's I believe gonna help guide this up and down that little pin if you look here is connected to this part which is this whole lifter lever to be able to use your knee to lift the lifter lever that's what that is and look now it's moving so whatever was locked up and I think it was all of the nasty on the the bar it was keeping this part locked up. So it's good to see that that is moving now. I'm going to take this needle out. The screw is facing the back of the harp here, okay? It's in this orientation, all right? So when I'm putting it back together, I need to remember that's how it goes. So this is the screw that holds my rusty needle in. And here is my needle. Um, I did buy a new set of needles that is supposed to be sized correctly for this machine. So I'm just going to throw this one away, you know, thank you for your service, and proceed with taking apart my needle bar. It looks like there's a thread guide here. Um, not too sure how it's connected. I don't feel a screw right now, so I'm going to have to take a peek at that. Um, I have three screws that look like they're connected. I have one up here that looks like it's holding in a bushing, which I'm going to leave alone for right now because I'm not pulling out bushings. Then I have this screw here, which looks like it is connecting that needle bar to some other piece. Okay. And then I have another one down here, which is the clamp. And I'm going to take this one out and see if that is enough to start moving this needle bar around and freeing it up. So when I'm looking here in my dish of needle bar screws so far, the tinier one right here is for the clamp that holds the needle on. This one is for the needle bar clamp, okay? So smaller one is needle, needle bar. Okay, I actually took out this screw, which is connected to this like a shield kind of piece with a couple little wicks sticking out of it, okay? Because I need to remove this, well first of all just to clean it to be able to get in here. Now I can tell you from that screw was right here, that's where that shield comes on. But now this needle bar is turning very freely. Um, I'm going to see if I can just punch it straight up through the top here. Maybe, maybe I need to undo that screw to get it to push up. Not sure yet. Give me a minute. All right, so I got the needle bar out. I had to do some tapping from the bottom, and yes, I did use a Phillips head Chapman bit as a tap just because it would fit down there, and I hardly ever use these 
these bits, so sorry about that. I don't think I damaged it, but I was able to use that to use it kind of as a tap from the bottom to get it moved up enough. Now, look, there's um, timing marks up here at the top, so that's good. So when I get to the point that I'm putting it back and trying to time the machine, um, I'm hopeful that that's going to go well. Down here at the bottom, you can see, hopefully you can see, looks like a round hole where the needle goes in. So a little bit different. And I'm going to go ahead and put this. It screws everything that has to do with the needle bar that I have not already put in separate baggies into my little kit. So now hopefully I can pull out the needle bar clamp. Usually they just stick in there. Let me spray a little more penetrating oil there. I should be able to also lift out this piece unless it's screwed in. Are you screwed in? Looks like there's a pin here that is holding on to this. This is the part that when you lift the presser foot, this comes over and pushes up against the tension and releases tension so you can pull your threads out easy. But it looks like it's being held on by a pin. Um, I can feel a hole on the back side. If I wanted to, I can push it out. I'm not too sure if I'm going to right now. But I do want to see if I can get this out because it's kind of nasty. I can tell. There you go. Um, there is no screw in the back. That's interesting. On the domestic ones, there's always a screw in the back. So, you know, that's interesting. I'm going to put this with my needle bar. Um, and right now, everything else in here, I am just going to try to clean in place for a little bit and just see how well I can do that. So I was cleaning around in there and I found this little piece floating around, which looks like some kind of a bearing type block that goes up and down in a slide. And that hole looks about the size of the needle bar. So for right now, I'm gonna keep it with needle bar stuff. I do have a book with a part list so I can look it up and figure out where that is. But I just wanted to point that out. It was way down at the bottom um, of the little cavity there. So there you go. Okay, so I have her fairly clean at this point, and I wanted to try to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, see this big bushing here? That's not coming out. At least it's not coming out for me, all right? And I cannot get this piece, which is connected to this, this, and this, are all connected into one big piece, as is this, that I will not be able to pull out unless I pull out the bushing, okay? Sequence. So that's going to stay. That's going to stay. But actually, um, I can't do it right now because she's resting on her wheel. But when I turn the wheel, this is actually moving very freely right now. So I'm pretty darn pleased about that. Um, but I got it clean enough not final polish, but clean enough in here that I feel like I can go ahead and move on to taking this piece off um, too, because I want to get that off so that it can be in the bin to be cleaned. Uh, now up here, this is what I pulled off earlier, off camera I think. Uh, this is part of the oil lubrication system. And up here, if you can see, um, this little tube right here. Okay, you see that funky looking hairy mess coming out? That's from the oil system also. So it comes down here and little droplets flow down in here and keeps everything oiled up. Okay, so that will be flushed. Hopefully, we'll see. I've got her tipped on her front, I guess you can say, and I am just unscrewing this piece. It's about a 5 8 inch piece. Lots of stuff going on there. I'm just going to set that aside, but that should help to loosen all of this up. Uh, can I just pull it straight out? No, there's something else here holding it. Hang on a second. Let me take a peek underneath and see what I have. Oh, there it was. It was a spring. Okay, so there's a spring under here. This goes in like this, okay? And I can tell you, this makes a lot of sense now. 
Um, remember I, when I was first taking the foot pedal or the knee lifter up, the spring had broken. So I ordered a new knee lifter spring. This is what came. Um, one of these, which is totally wrong shape for what I needed. So I ended up, you know, just rebending it into the configuration I needed for my part that is way over there, okay? But that makes a lot of sense now why this is called the knee lifter spring. So this little bent part goes in that hole, centers over there, and this goes in like so, okay? So now that that is out, this is that little end that we saw in here. Okay, so I can totally clean that. And down here below, the knee lifter down below has a little plunger that pushes up on here. Okay, so that's how this works. Let me see if I can just pull it straight through. Probably not. I have to um, loosen these nuts off so I can pull this little brass shaft all the way down through the bottom. Now I'm going to show you there was a little nut. We got a few nuts here. There's a nut up against a nut, okay, like this, and then there's another round one down there. But I'm thinking that this is an adjustable area, you know, where you can raise it or lower it to adjust the knee lift. And just to keep track of it, to the top of the nut that is the, the second one, looks like it is about 14 millimeters-ish, 14 millimeters from the top of the thread, top of the screw to where um, this, one is in, this one is ending. So just so I can put it back together the same as it is right now, that's what I've got. Okay, so this is what I have. Here's this part, obviously. This is the little brass shaft. And when this came out, there was a little bushing down here that popped out also, which probably sets in this hole here. I'll have to look into it exactly how, because it was just kind of flopping around. There was what looks like a felt washer um, down below here. Okay, and so right in there is where the hole is. And I'm thinking that the little wide part of this was coming up against the washer down below. Okay, so I think I'll just create a new felt washer. I'll cut a piece and make it work. Um, but since I took this out, now I have access to this screw. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out because that's this other plate here that I can pull out so I can clean inside the nose a little better. Okay, so here it is. You know, it was just inside there. It screws on. So I'm going to keep that, you know, with these parts. But that's going to give me a lot of access to clean this area here. And so that's going to be really helpful. Now that it's on its side, I want to show you. I can spin this very freely. And it is turning really, really well. Very happy about that because I am not pulling these shafts out, you know? Yeah, this is kind of nasty and everything, but very happy about that. So that's a good day's work. I am going to go ahead and get these cleaned up um, and make sure that I remember where they go before I come down here for the other part I said I wanted to get to, which was to pull off the cover of the oil filter and work on flushing out all of these lines. So that will be a project for another day. Okay, so I wanted to show you, I went ahead and stripped down my front plate and cleaned it up. And there's a little brass looking thing there that had Singer on it. I am going to put a new Singer decal over that. So I went ahead and just cleaned it down to the bare brass in there. And I wanted to take a picture here because I pulled out, this is that little nub that comes out. Here's the set screw. But I wanted to document the orientation because it's got a little curve that comes down. Okay. And so where the, um, the way it was when I pulled it out was like this. Okay. So here's a little oil hole for the center on the bottom. And then it was like this. Now it's kind of odd to me because the flat part of this shaft is on the top and I would normally think that the flat part should be lined up where the set screw is, like this. 
that would make sense to me, but it came off the other way. I just want you to know I'm going to try it both ways. It might have rotated, you never know. But to me it always makes more sense where the little set screw thing comes up against the flat part. But I'm going to go ahead, this will get polished up, you know, so it's shiny all the way around. And these are going to get um, the centers here masked off, you know, because I want to be able to rotate that carefully. But these are going to get primer on them. Uh, later on I will be doing my color coat. Okay, good morning and welcome to the next day. I am underneath my rosy machine here and I am going to pull this off. It looks like there's just some flathead screws that's the cap for this and as far as I can tell from my diagrams in my book when I pull that off I'll be able to see an impeller in there. So that's my first step is getting those screws off. Okay so as soon as I got the last screw off this whole thing popped off. Very nasty. Incredibly nasty. And this is what I'm looking at. So this looks like the cap to it. All right, again, very nasty. And there is my impeller. Uh, that is what's going to, as the motor turns and the belt is turning and the gears are turning, okay, this spins also. It's like linked to the gears inside here, okay? So when the machine is running fast, the impeller is going to shoot oil in here, which is going to shoot it up this pipe, which is going to push it through wherever the pipe leads in the rest of the machine. Okay. Um, I did a lot of thinking last night, and I have decided I am going to be putting this machine into my electrolysis tank because, from what I can tell, um, it's iron, mostly iron. There is, you know, some stainless steel in there, but I think it will hold up well. My electrolysis tank will remove rust, it'll remove grease, and it will get the old paint loose so that I can remove it and repaint her. And because she is just so utterly filthy, I think that is the best way to go. I am not going to be removing everything though. Oh look, see this? That is the little lever that that part up here that we took off last night. Okay, that's what lifts the lifter lever. So, you know, just pointing that out. Anyway, let me go ahead and pull the bobbin out while I'm down here. I can. You'd think I would have done that before. You know, that's really gross, so that's going to need to get cleaned out too. Um... But yeah, yeah, I need to do that. I need to see if I can get this hand wheel off first, though. I just wanted to show you. I just tipped it up and put the machine on my wooden block up there so that, you know, it's off the ground. And look, when I turn this hand wheel, you can see the little impeller move, okay? And that is directly from all of those gears moving. So that's how it works. Pretty slick. I want to show you, I just pulled off the plate and it was just glued on. There's still junk all over the plate, so definitely a lot of stuff here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove those two screws to take the feed dogs off and uh, see if I can get down here to deal with this also. All right, I got it off. This is the underside of the feed dogs. I think that should get like a schmoo award or something like that. What do you think, Bob? Ooh, part of it fell off already. But yeah, pretty gross. Um, I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more down here disassembled. Okay, there is a little piece right here that looks like it's blocking that race in. So I've loosened up this screw and I'm going to see if I can get this piece out, maybe. Maybe I'm fighting it because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get uh, all of this out. I may just have to do that. Okay, so this piece just popped off. It was welded in there with glue. This is where it was. Okay, just one screw holding it in. And this little nub right there, okay, you can see it's angled up just a little bit you know, squint through the crud there. But that little nub is what is fitting right here 
in the bobbin case, okay? So I'm hopeful that that might loosen things up for me. Okay, so let me tell you what I've got here. I have not been successful at pulling off this hook, so the screws that I took off previously, I put back in. I'm gonna let this stay in place while she is in my cleaning tank, okay? And in addition to that, I am gonna leave the big balance wheel on too because I was having trouble with this. And my thought is once it goes through the tank and um, all of the cleaning and rust removal and gunk removal and everything is done, I might be able to get it off at that point. But she is moving freely, so that's good. I pulled off the sight glass and it was broken, but, but I think I can get another one. Um, so I have its little frame and everything that I'm going to be cleaning off. So I'm going to go ahead and get my electrolysis tank started filling. Um, let me walk you over there. Okay, so my tank is filling up. And um, if you haven't seen this before, it's my electrolysis tank. I basically have it hooked to a battery, which is then hooked to a battery charger. So as soon as the water is covering the top of the machine, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the battery charger. This battery is dead right now, so nothing's actually happening. And I'm going to be leaving her in here probably for about four days. I think that that's going to be good. Um, the water has a combination of washing soda and a little bit of TSP powder just for extra cleaning ability, you know, that seems to work well on really nasty machines. So the uh, things that are clipped to the outside are big steel diamond plate, um, steel panels and then there is a big wire that's connecting them all. So, you know, it's just positive, negative, and everything like that. So next time you see her, hopefully she'll be a lot cleaner. And I have a lot of cleaning to do on all of her parts over there. So that's about it for today. Um, I thought I was gonna be able to disassemble a few more things, but you know, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. But I think that it's a really good step towards getting her ready to put back together. And there are some pieces that I've actually already, you know, stripped off and they're going to be painted. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do next time. Hopefully next time I am going to be actually being able to take the machine itself, finish off any residual stripping and anything that needs to happen to that machine. Because sometimes the electrolysis tank doesn't pull everything off, you know, there's little pieces left. But I have had really good success with it with Godzilla skinned machines before, so I'm very hopeful. Um, but yeah, hopefully next time we'll be painting and I will see you then. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.